Okay, so um, let me welcome all of you to the afternoon session. Um, my name is Bernd Kortmann. I'm the director of the Freiburg Institute for Advanced Studies, uh, FRIAS. Some of you may remember it was this institution that um, founded UBS in 2010. Um, and my colleague, Carsten Dose, who is currently not in this room, but he was uh, for quite a while, I think six years in total, uh, the coordinator of this, um, of this wonderful network. Um, and for the last two years, I have had the pleasure of serving as co our deputy coordinator to Martin Kindrop as the coordinator and with my wonderful colleague, um, Ari Plonsky, um, at my side. And the three of us, when we talked about the program of this director's meeting, um, there were several things that, on the basis of our experiences with past meetings, we wanted to slightly modify or change. The one thing was we wanted to have more time for the directors to talk to each other. So this is why we actually have tried to make space for these networking sessions, which I will say more about later on. We will also have the director's business meeting in the middle of the conference. And, and this relates to this afternoon, we thought um, it's perhaps not so useful to have individual presentations by the individual member institutes, but rather to have regional surveys so that we have um, sort of uh, from people who know the scene, who know the scene in their respective continent or respective continents to actually give us a 15, 20 minute survey of what are activities right now with regard to institutes um, for advanced studies in, in that part of the world. And I'm very happy um, that for um, Asia, uh, Hideaki Miyajima um, agreed to give this presentation. Um, Hideaki is a director of the Vasida Institute for Advanced Study. He's a professor of Japanese economy, um, and he actually teaches also Japanese economy and corporate governance in Japan. He's <laughs> held many distinguished uh, fellowships, professorships, honorary uh, visiting professorships at Harvard, in Seoul, uh, in Paris, in different parts of the world. Um, and he really has a very good overview of what the activities of these institutes are in Asia. And Hideaki, I'm very glad that you actually uh, stayed up so late for us. We know it's about two o'clock in the morning or so, so we <laughs> admire you deeply. Um, and thank you very much for speaking to us. So the floor is yours. Please. Okay. Um, yes, uh, good afternoon. Thank and you. Uh, yes. uh, my name is Hideaki Miyajima, and uh, the chairman uh, kindly introduced me. Uh, I'm very uh, uh, sorry uh, I cannot participate in our conference site today, but I'm very happy uh, to join uh, this meeting uh, through uh, Skype. Oh, thank you uh, so much for uh, giving me a chance to present uh, the uh, UBS around the world uh, in the uh, Asian uh, area. So let me uh, go to uh, my uh, substantial part. So, uh, uh, topic uh, that I present you today a uh, composed of uh, four points. Uh, first one is uh, briefly uh, give us some notion of uh, UBS member institute in ADM uh, area. And secondly, uh, I will explain the uh, distribution activity of Institute for Advanced Study uh, in Japan. And thirdly, I uh, briefly uh, explain the activity of Waseda Institute for Advanced Study, which is my uh, our institute. And lastly, I uh, explain uh, some uh, illustration of a collaborative work among UBS members in Asia. Uh, I uh, explain uh, these uh, four points. At first, uh, this map uh, show you uh, some uh, geographical distribution uh, of uh, Institute for Advanced Study in uh, Asian uh, area. So in Japan, uh, we have uh, two uh, Institute for Advanced Study, uh, Waseda and Nagoya Institute for uh, Advanced Study. Uh, so uh, Professor Nishidawa uh, participated in uh, this meeting uh, from uh, Nagoya Institute. And in Korea, there is a, a institute uh, which is called the Korean Institute of 
for advanced study. And China, we have a three. And Taiwan, uh, we have a one uh, institute uh, for advanced study, uh, which belongs to uh, uh, Taiwan National uh, University. And uh, lastly, uh, in the uh, southern uh, part of uh, Asia, uh, in India, uh, we have uh, an institute, uh, J. Horawal, uh, Nehru Institute for Advanced Study. So these are the uh, institute, uh, which has an institute of advanced study uh, name uh, and the membership of uh, our network uh, in uh, Asian uh, area. So let me uh, explain slightly uh, briefly for e e uh, each institute. And the first institute uh, is the Korean Institute for Advanced Study, and it is uh, its ab abbreviation is TIAS. And the TIAS uh, established in 1996, and mainly uh, this institute focused on uh, basic science, uh, specific, uh, specifically mathematics, physics, and the computer sciences. And this institute uh, is a <coughs> relatively big institute and uh, almost over 30 uh, full professor, uh, tenureship professor. And in China, uh, there are three institutes. Uh, first one uh, rotates in Beijing, and the other one uh, rotates in Nanjing, and the third one rotates in the Shanghai area. And uh, these three institutes uh, is established in, uh, in 2000. And the uh, Beijing Institute is mainly uh, researching on the humanity studies. And the Nanjing University is the humanity and social sciences. And uh, these two institutes uh, have uh, our own researchers and also uh, promote uh, young researchers. And the Fudan Institute for Advanced Study uh, in Social Science uh, is, uh, as the name showed, uh, this uh, institute focus on uh, social sciences, especially uh, legal uh, science, uh, law, and political science, and uh, sociology, and some uh, contemporary issues. And different from uh, two institutes, which are uh, located in Beijing and Nanjing, uh, this institute focusing on the humanities uh, mainly, but this institute is social science. And uh, this institute uh, mainly uh, event-driven in, uh, institute. And uh, uh, this institute uh, try to be uh, uh, having a lot of a symposium and a conference in uh, Fudan University. And so uh, this institute uh, is uh, a, a core of uh, international activity of uh, Fudan University. And next slide, uh, we uh, show uh, several another institute and uh, Institute for Advanced Study in Humanities and Social Science uh, located in uh, Taiwan, uh, which belongs to the National Taiwan University. And uh, this uh, institute is mainly focusing on the humanities and social science. And this institute is very active for uh, our networking, and uh, it hosted uh, our uh, meeting in the last year, I think. And uh, recently, the uh, director uh, is uh, changed, and now the uh, director is an economist and try to uh, put uh, some uh, priority or energy on uh, economic uh, uh, economics area. And uh, last institute outside Japan is the uh, Institute, Nehru Institute of Advanced Study. And unfortunately, we do not have any uh, intimate relationship uh, to, uh, with uh, this institute, but this institute are focusing on the humanities, social sciences, uh, as well as our natural sciences. And in Japan, uh, we have uh, uh, Nagoya and Waseda University. Uh, these two uh, universities have their uh, institute for having uh, a name of Institute for Advanced Study. And both institutes uh, is similar 
uh, in the sense that uh, humanity, social sciences, and natural science is uh, uh, area of uh, the uh, institutional activities. So these are the brief picture uh, of the uh, distribution of the Institute for Advanced Studies uh, in uh, Asian area. Then uh, let's move to the uh, situation of the uh, Japan. Uh, UBS member uh, institute in Japan are currently two, uh, Nagoya University and Waseda University. But on the other hand, a number of uh, institutes for advanced study, so exactly to say that, is, uh, that having a name of institute of advanced study uh, has been increasing in Japan. And uh, most institutes are established in the top national university, uh, such as the Tokyo University, uh, University of Tokyo, Kyoto University, and other uh, universities. And this university is aiming to become a world-class research hub uh, through establishing this institute, and also aiming at uh, foster the young researcher and obtaining external uh, funding. And these are the, uh, this slide and the next slide uh, is the uh, brief description of the uh, current uh, institute, uh, which has a name of Institute of Advanced Study in Japan. And in Japan, as you know, uh, the, uh, the size of Japan or the population of Japan is relatively big, uh, 120 million. And uh, in Japan, uh, there is a lot uh, of uh, uh, research university uh, 12. And uh, this research uh, university uh, has uh, uh, some uh, money from a government. And uh, uh, this uh, university try to be a uh, uh, top university or a uh, world rank uh, level of research university uh, within Japan. And among this uh, 11 uh, research university, uh, aside with uh, Anangwe and Waseda, uh, this university also have an uh, uh, institute for advanced study. So Kyushu is the uh, name of the northern, uh, uh, sorry, a southern part of Japan. And uh, Kyushu University is the uh, best university in the southern uh, part of Japan. This university has the Institute of Advanced Study in 2009. And Tokyo University established uh, Institute of Advanced Study in uh, 2011. And the uh, next slide, uh, Kyoto University and also uh, Osaka University uh, recently uh, established Institute uh, for Advanced Study. Uh, so uh, the uh, abbreviation and uh, area of the uh, main activity is uh, summarized in this slide. And recent uh, phenomenon or recent uh, uh, activity of this institute uh, is mainly uh, focusing on uh, natural sciences and uh, some uh, fundamental sciences or, uh, as well as the uh, biotech or uh, integrated cell material life science area. And uh, this uh, institute is somehow the uh, area oriented and uh, natural science based and try to get uh, uh, some research fund from a government. So uh, uh, the character of these institutes is a slightly uh, different. Uh, There is the uh, similar to uh, Institute for Advanced Study, uh, Waseda and Nagoya is the uh, Shitotsubashi uh, Institute for Advanced Study. And the Shitotsubashi University is a social science uh, specialized university. And this university uh, newly established uh, Shitotsubashi Institute for Advanced Study, uh, mainly uh, focusing on political science and the sociology and uh, low uh, area. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, there's uh, some noise. Is it okay to continue? Well, we hear you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yep. Uh, let me uh, continue. And then uh, let's 
Ami Epstein Asad Azori our University Institute for Advanced, our Center Institute for Advanced Studies at the and Waseda University, uh, I have uh, some opportunity to, to explain uh, our activity about uh, this university. So I'm afraid we can't hear you right now. Maybe you can okay. stop for, for, for a second. I, I give you a signal again when, when we can hear you. Okay. Again. Yes. Um, yes, that's fine. Is it okay? So, uh, seems to be okay. Okay, so uh, uh, the uh, size of our university is relatively big, and we have a 30 graduate undergrad schools and 24 graduate schools, all together students is over 50,000. And the alumni is the uh, 600k uh, students. And this university, uh, our institute was established in 2006, and the tenure program and uh, first recruiting process was begin in 2006 and 2007, uh, respectively. And recently, we introduced a visiting fellow program and a visiting scholar program. Now, uh, we uh, all together we have accepted about uh, 150 young researcher and uh, 50 uh, visiting fellow uh, in the uh, last 10 years. And uh, initiatives of uh, our uh, main activity of wires uh, have a uh, threefold mission and aims. And first one is uh, developing the next generation young researchers. Uh, we give uh, some uh, good position uh, to a young researcher with three or five years uh, uh, time, and uh, they uh, have a very uh, advantageous uh, research environment and uh, pushing them uh, to uh, have uh, to write or to product uh, uh, very high rank uh, researches. And uh, also our mission is uh, to promote a tenure track system uh, across the uh, entire university and also uh, expanding opportunity uh, for uh, overseas researchers. And bias uh, is, uh, so our, our activity is ranging uh, from the natural science to uh, social science so that uh, interdisciplinary research is highly uh, recommended. And uh, we try to be a hub uh, or uh, some engine or driving force uh, to implement a project uh, involving uh, research from a uh, uh, diverse background and uh, interdisciplinary uh, work. And uh, we, uh, our institute is also expected uh, to be uh, to build a global academic community and expose uh, our research activities, achievement to the world, and developing a link uh, with the leading international uh, research institute, uh, including uh, UBS networks. And uh, our research environment uh, in at Wires uh, uh, is uh, described as the three keywords. Uh, first, uh, one is the interdisciplinary uh, aspects, and the second aspect is international, and the third uh, aspect is intergenerational. And we compose the young researchers and uh, uh, the uh, organization was run by a uh, director and associate director uh, who came from the uh, other department of our university. And we also uh, invited a uh, uh, research affiliate uh, from the uh, other faculty and uh, also uh, to uh, invite or to accept uh, foreign researchers as the uh, visiting fellow as, uh, or the uh, visiting scholar. And uh, all together of this activity, our aim is uh, creating a new frontier researches and uh, producing a next generation of leader in academic 
uh, field and the raising of uh, any versus academic uh, positions uh, in uh, uh, world academic uh, area. And lastly, uh, let me uh, briefly uh, explain, uh, follow the, uh, our collaboration among UBS uh, members. And uh, in Asian area, uh, 2011, we have a MOU uh, with the uh, TIAS uh, in Korea, as well as the Fudan Institute for uh, Advanced Study in uh, Social Science. And the septa, uh, September 2011, uh, Asian Institute for Advanced Study Forum uh, was held uh, at TIAS, uh, which title is Promises, Challenges, and the New Frontier. And we uh, participated and collaborated uh, this uh, 15th anniversary events of uh, TIAS. And March uh, 14, 2006, uh, 16, uh, we also uh, hosted to a uh, UBS International Academic uh, Meeting, uh, was a uh, workshop uh, jointly hosted uh, with the uh, Institute for Advanced uh, Research and our uh, university. And, uh, also, 2016, uh, we have uh, some. Uh, uh, we have a participation uh, in uh, 10th anniversary events of uh, National Taiwan University, uh, which titled the pre uh, premise of a UBS Type Institute. And uh, we also uh, invited or in Asian area, uh, December 2016, uh, second forum of uh, Asian Institute for Advanced Study uh, was held uh, by uh, Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, we could not uh, participate in it, but uh, we get uh, a lot of information uh, from uh, Nanyang Technological University for this uh, event. And last year, November, uh, Nagoya Institute for Advanced Research uh, International Workshop was held, and we also participated. And recently, uh, we have some, uh, try to have a close connection with the uh, Nagoya Institute for Advanced uh, Researches, and uh, we have a monthly workshop uh, in our institute, and we invited a uh, member of Anawe University uh, at our seminar, and uh, we try to have uh, this uh, trial uh, regularly, uh, at least once, uh, possibly twice a year. And we also are uh, planning to have a workshop or symposium uh, over uh, this year's uh, UBS topic uh, for aging, life, culture, civilization uh, with uh, UBS uh, member institute in Asia, such as uh, TIAS or uh, Taiwan National uh, University. So uh, in sum, uh, having uh, this uh, experience, uh, we are planning to enhance our collaboration with UBS member, uh, our members institute in Asia, and uh, holding a seminar or a regular meeting uh, in the future. So these are the uh, brief explanation uh, of the uh, network uh, of uh, UBS in Asian uh, area. Uh, thank you for your uh, listening. Let me thank you on behalf of all of us and also of our coordinator, Morten Kindrup, for giving this presentation. Thank you very much. And um, once again, a big hand for you. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. And now I think you will be happy to, uh, yeah. to get a little sleep. One question, one question from Olivier, the next speaker. Hang on, one question. <laughs> yeah? okay. yes. I can do. Do you hear me? I was just wondering how you. Um, you presented in China three institutes, uh, Beijing, uh, Nanjing, and Fudan. Uh, Shanghai. Yes. And I was wondering why the three, because uh, last time in Nagoya we were presenting, 
with more uh, institutes for advanced study. I think there was a group of like, I don't remember, but like 10 to 12. And uh, still in the list of three, we're not, uh, I am not entirely uh, convinced that Fudan, for example, is a running institute uh, with the standards of an institute for advanced study. So I was wondering how you discriminated, in a sense, uh, these uh, institutes in China and how you came up out with this list of three institutes. Mm. So uh, it, it, it's... Uh, it, it's it, the uh, uh, clear answer uh, will be very difficult to say. But the, uh, the first one is, as long as I understand, the uh, UBS membership, this uh, free institute uh, has a, a clear membership. And we have uh, some uh, opportunities uh, to have uh, some uh, communication uh, with this free institute. And the rest of the institute, uh, I, uh, we do not have a still a clear communication so that uh, um, once the uh, network will be clear in the Asian area, uh, we are willing to have a, a connection. And uh, another point is the, uh, at the beginning, uh, uh, when the uh, UBS network was established, so these three institutes are original member. And uh, right after the uh, UBS network established, uh, we have uh, some discussion with the uh, Fudan University, and let's try to uh, set uh, some uh, dense communication with the Fudan and the Waseda. And that's why we uh, established a uh, major uh, MOU uh, with the Fudan. After that, that uh, unfortunately, the concrete activity is not advanced, but uh, uh, so still there are uh, some uh, relationships uh, remaining uh, uh, between uh, Waseda and the Fudan University. So, uh, uh, so it would be a, a discussion point uh, for us uh, to uh, establish much tense and uh, intimate relationship uh, with uh, other institutes in, uh, in Asian uh, area. But on the other hand, uh, the, some uh, point to be considered is the, uh, the institute uh, of uh, Asian area uh, have very different characteristics. So Akias is a natural science oriented and uh, basic science oriented. And uh, uh, so far the institute uh, which uh, uh, rotates in uh, China, uh, China mainland is either social science or mainly humanities. And so uh, how to make uh, some cross connection uh, in the humanity area uh, needs some uh, say high imaginative uh, idea uh, so that uh, it would be a uh, uh, next task uh, for us to uh, consider. Thank you very much for your, uh, for your for clarifying this. I think what this question has also shown is that there is quite, that there are quite some dynamics, let's say, in, the, in this consortium. New, uh, new institutes actually spring up uh, and um, other institutes that sort of, uh, sort of joined, for instance, this consortium, I don't know, 10 years ago, eight years ago, they may also undergo changes. So there is actually really dynamics uh, in this consortium. It's really useful to look um, at the individual situation um, every uh, couple of years. So once again, uh, dear colleague uh, Miyajima, so thank you very much for uh, um, giving your presentation and good night to Japan. <laughs> thank you so much. Good night. So we continue then with the situation um, Europe. I mean, if we, if we look at the global uh, landscape, uh, I speak so loud anyway. So, um, uh, if we look at the global um, landscape of, of um, institutes for advanced studies in general, university-based institutes for advanced studies uh, in particular, we, we see, of course, a bias. We simply see that there is a, a, an enormous concentration of these institutes in Europe, uh, for example, and uh, also a number in, in, in North America. Um, but then we have Asia and we have 
very little, for example, in Australia. We have um, very uh, few only in, um, in Africa, for example. And we are happy to see that there is a growing number in, uh, in uh, Latin and Central America. But Europe is probably that part of the world that actually boasts the largest uh, number of these institutes, also an enormous um, variety. And this is why it's great to have um, Mr. Um, uh, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> IAS uh, among us, so Olivier uh, Bouin, um, who's actually served as the director of the French network of institutes for advanced studies, I don't know for how many years, so nine, nine years, ten. almost 10, that's right. And um, he's actually um, also been the secretary of NETIAS, the network of 23 institutes for advanced study in Europe. So he's not only coordinating the French network of four institutes, but he's also uh, very much um, in charge of, of coordinating activities uh, between these um, European institutes and among other things he was also um, the person and his office actually uh, governed the so-called URIAS program. This is a Marie Curie co-fund program with Brussels that allowed uh, a subset of these 23 institutes to actually host international scholars. I could tell you many more about all things about Olivier, but I think the most important thing is if there is someone in Europe who can tell you something about the situation in Europe, ask him, and here he is. So, uh, thank you, Ben. Thank you uh, for the invitation. I think I have between 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, so uh, it's uh, the previous colleague had like 20 minutes to present eight institutes for advanced study in Asia. I have like 15 minutes or 20 minutes to present 23 institutes in Europe. So I will be very fast. I will not read all the slides. And I will start also with a map. And uh, please flag your hand if you uh, don't see your institute on the map, because it's one of another feature, feature of this uh, Institute for Advanced Study, also in Europe, that it's a changing map. We have more additions than subtractions. But if I were to have shown this map a few years ago, uh, you, would have in, you would have Brussels on the, on the map. It's not an institute that is existing anymore. Years ago, there was an institute in Copenhagen, and now you have an institute in Aarhus. You are now an institute in Madrid. So it's a changing world. So basically here, what you have, you have like three types of dots. It doesn't show maybe that well from where you see it, but uh, uh, we, the, the green one, are those who are members of this URIAS consortium. Uh, so eight, 19 Institute for Advanced Study are taking part uh, into a joint fellowship program co-sponsored by the European Commission. And these are the green dots. Uh, some of them have been part in what we call Arias 1, the first consortium. Some of them are taking part in Arias 2, i.e. the second consortium. Then you have some red dots. The red dots are those who are members of NETIAS, the Network of European Institute for Advanced Studies, but uh, that are not part of the URIAS Fellowship Program. So you have Bielfeld, you have uh, Oslo, Nantes, Sofia, and Bucharest. Uh, so altogether, we have this group of Institute for Advanced Studies, and you have other gray dots, such as uh, Toulouse, uh, Strasbourg, Birmingham, Durham, Tampere, Warsaw, uh, who are not, that are not yet members of the consortium or of the network or of Institute for Advanced Studies. So, Altogether, it's 23 in the NETIAS uh, world, but we are uh, in around uh, 30 institutes for advanced study in Europe. And uh, as you know, it's not a label that has been registered anywhere in, the, in, in a country or at the European level. And this is a problematic because, uh, as you know, you have a lot of center for advanced studies or institute for advanced studies uh, that are not really functioning as institute for advanced study. And uh, what we try to do is to divide, as we may say, the, the, the wheat from the chaff, in a sense, trying to figure out who are the real institute for advanced studies, those that are operating on what we have uh, discussed this morning the, the, and what our colleagues from Japan introduced, this question of interdisciplinarity, of internationalization of research, intergenerational uh, type of uh, discussion. And so here, what I try really to sketch, uh, and I will send you the slides if you want to read a little bit more, uh, I divided it into four categories, the pioneers, 
and uh, we start with Bielfeld here. Uh, we'll celebrate the 50th anniversary in, in the autumn, so Zentrum für Interdisziplinäre Forschung, and then in 68, then followed in 69 by the Institute for Advanced Studies in Humanities in Edinburgh, and 71, the Netherlands Institute for Advanced Study in Vasnach and now in Amsterdam and uh, the Israel Institute for Advanced Study in 1975. These were the pioneers, in a sense, the four, uh, I would say, uh, 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 first institutes for advanced studies. Then we had early followers, <laughs> those who in the 80s jumped in, uh, in the, uh, and considered it was important to have an institute for advanced study, the Wissenschaft College to Berlin, early 80s, uh, the uh, 81, uh, the Institute for the Wissenschaft and Formation in Vienna, 82, uh, with uh, Christoph Michalski, who was uh, the founding member of this institute, wonderful institute in Vienna, the Swedish Collegium for Advanced Study, uh, Bjorn Vitrock, uh, back in 85. So these are, I would say, the early followers after the, the first pioneers. Then you had like a bunch of late followers, I would say, uh, in the 90s, those who uh, were developed and created, the Oslo Center for Advanced Study, the Collegium Budapest, the Collegium Helveticum, uh, all between, I would say, 92 and 95, 96. And then uh, what I say, what I call recent entries, new Institute for Advanced Study, because it's really uh, a changing world. The four institutes that were created in a row in France, we started for a long period before starting an Institute for Advanced Study, so we decided to create four in a row. Uh, so Lyon, Marseille, Nantes, and Paris. Then you have Freiburg, uh, more or less at the same time. And uh, Aarhus was uh, more uh, after, a little bit after that. And then we helped uh, two institutes uh, develop, one in Madrid. We have a colleague here representing uh, MIAS, the Madrid Institute for Advanced Studies. It's interesting also to see the, the acronyms, FRIAS, IAS, MIAS, PIAS. So it's now a battle for the acronym, in a sense. Uh, it, was, it was fun to see UTIAS, the University of Tokyo Institute for Advanced Studies, because in Strasbourg, we have UZIAS, so University of Strasbourg Institute for Advanced Studies. So it's really a growing, uh, a growing uh, field and a growing number. And what you see from this diversity, and that will be one of my points in my presentation, is that the names are not the same, especially in the first, I would say, two or three uh, cohorts of institutes. Now it tends, it tends to be a bit more homogenized in the sense that more institutes are created at the initiative of, of, of universities. So they tend to create uh, the acronym with the, the name of the university, plus IAS, which is like a standard name. But as you can see at the beginning, and I will, I will come back to this issue, um, there's a great diversity uh, between Institute for Advanced Study. Here, this is uh, the common goal, uh, but here I don't have to uh, tell you what an Institute for Advanced Study is all about, because you are part of this world as well. But I think the idea, and we discussed with Michal and with Bernd, with Morton, with many friends in this room, many times, what was the specificity of Institute for Advanced Study? Uh, you, have not, you have a lot of international programs in universities. You have a lot of incubators. You have a lot of interdisciplinary uh, initiatives, programs. Uh, so what is the specificity of Institute for Advanced Study? What kind of infrastructure, of research infrastructure it is? So I'll try to sketch with a few like words, and I don't have time because it's already seven minutes. Uh, so basically uh, favoring the invigoration and diversification of research, promoting an open approach to research and with an emphasis on methodological pluralism, looking, IES are not places where you program research. You let research, fundamental research and applied research in a sense, blossom and develop because of what I have in the in the last slide, and I don't know if Paolo Sadiva is here, but just this morning he, he said learning is important, and it was uh, the Wissenschaft Kolleg uh, Rector uh, Wolf Lepen, he said Institute for Advanced Studies are learning communities. In a sense, you bring people with strong disciplinary background, and what you will be trying to do is to foster a dialogue across diverse intellectual and scientific traditions, and you will try to do the you will try to foster this dialogue via formal and informal exchanges not only the seminar presentation that we have in many institutions but also more informal ways of and it's part of the knowledge 
of, an in, of this research infrastructure and one of the specificity of the Institute for Advanced Study is to know how to foster this dialogue across disciplines, intellectual traditions. It's not easy. It's not something you can just immediately say, okay, I will do that. It's, there's also a learning by doing process and those who have been uh, running institutes for years now, uh, you gain experience, you know, and it's not the, the, the and it's what the, 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 the term I coined, uh, the, in the previous, I would say, uh, it, it, it looks like, or it sounds like an oxymoron, but it's not. Uh, we relied heavily on serendipity, the kind of uh, happy collision of uh, ideas and concepts and notions across uh, uh, researchers and scholars invited and fellows. But I think what we do at the Institute for Advanced Study is to manage serendipity, is to provide a conducive environment for good accidents to take place. We have very different uh, ways of implementing this uh, key objective or this key common goal that we all share in this room, uh, that is fostering new thinking through international, interdisciplinary, intergenerational dialogue. The, the, why diversity? Organizational forms out of the 23 institutes uh, in the NETIAS network, uh, I made the count again this morning, 12 are UBSs and 11 are independent institutes. Uh, independent institutes not belonging or being in the realm of one university, but it uh, can be an academy of sciences, it can be a fully independent institution like VICO, like North, like Vienna. So we have a wide diversity of organizational form, wide diversity in terms of territorial scope. Some of these institutes are national institutes, like uh, the, the Swedish Collegium for Advanced Study, or the Israel Institute for Advanced Study, or the Netherlands Institute for Advanced Study, and some of them are more like uh, city-based, or uh, I would say that here uh, the, uh, in Berlin or in, uh, in Vienna, these are institutes for advanced study, not for Germany, because you have like other institutes in Germany, but it's really much an institute that is located in one city. I won't go through all of them because you, uh, I can pinpoint only a, a few of them. Uh, the importance, for example, of SSH in the scientific objectives and functioning and programs of the institutes, that's something that's important because for a long time, um, the, 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 the Institute for Advanced Study were mostly located or heavily relying on social science and humanities, even though the mother of all institutes, Princeton, had only two schools, uh, history and social sciences, in social sciences, and two others in mathematics and, 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 and medicine or biology. Uh, so it was only physics. So the, the, the thing was, were a little bit uh, different and evolved over time. And now what you see, especially in Asia, and we're in Nagoya three or four months ago, the tendency is to create the Institute for Advanced Study that we mostly focus on natural sciences and or mostly focus, uh, focus on physics like NTU. He did not mention uh, the National Institute in, in Singapore. They are really 99% or 95% of the, of the functioning of the Institute is on uh, other sciences. So for us, at least in Europe, when you look at this map uh, at the beginning, most of these institutes are really uh, I would say focusing or take a very important part of the activities with social sciences, and that's, uh, that's a feature of, uh, of the European Institute for Advanced Study. I move to uh, the last uh, three. Uh, we have also great diversity in terms of uh, whether you have like uh, national or uh, um, fellows, people coming from uh, the same country or the same university as permanent or resident fellows, some of them accept that, some of them don't want to have that. And the same thing also for junior senior balance, you have a wide diversity of experience and you don't have a one size fits all in a sense. You can have like, it all depends what are the objectives of your institute and what you want to promote in a sense. If you want to have an impact on, uh, on the national, uh, I would say university and academic scene, it makes sense in a sense to have to allow to have fellows from the university or from or from your country. If you want to uh, focus mostly on, on on postdocs and and building on the future of research, then it makes more sense maybe to invite more juniors and seniors. But that's obvious. So these are all these uh, uh, different. Uh, 
aspects of, of, of Institute for Advanced Study in Europe and it's a wide diversity, but I would like to focus on this. When we took over uh, with the French network, the, uh, the, the coordination of the European network back in 2009, we said, well, we need to have like clear rules in a sense. We don't want to exclude anyone. We don't want to uh, say that there is only one model of institute for advanced study because if you were to refer to uh, Princeton or to Stanford, they are not functioning at all as an institute for advanced study or the way the 23 institute for advanced study function in, in Europe. So we are not looking for the golden age of institute for advanced study or a pure model of institute for advanced study, but we define kind of five criteria that are, I think, extremely helpful in order to make sure that we can divide between those institutes that are actually institutes for advanced studies and others that can may, may be doing wonderful things but do not really belong to that family. So we have these five criteria. The first one is basically, uh, uh, you know, restating what I said in my first slide. The idea is to build uh, international and multidisciplinary learning communities. Uh, but the, the four others are really important. You, you build on, you focus on individual scientific excellence. Even though you can have groups, you can have themes, you can have part of your invitation policy. And this morning, uh, I, I, I congratulate uh, the, the, the host institute. There was a mix with uh, Massimo presenting more uh, the, the individual fellow perspective from the institute, but also the, the group, the research group activities. And I think in an institute for you can have both. But on Anyway, you focus on individual scientific excellence. We know that if you want to do multi or even more difficult interdisciplinarity, you need to have strong, uh, I would say, uh, disciplinary excellence or monodisciplinary excellence before being indisciplinary. Uh, you need to be good <laughs> with your first, your own disciplines. The minimum size, I think this is something important. You cannot just put like, you know, print this, and, and put that on in front of your door, like this uh, IEA, uh, Universidad de São Paulo, and say, okay, I have an institute now. You have like some real characteristics. You need to have a fellowship policy. You need to have like locals or foreigners, but you need to have a, a, a fellowship policy. And if you want to discriminate from the invitation policy of universities and other schemes, we consider that above three months was a kind of duration that would be different from, I come from one week, I come from a month. We have many institutions that are able to do that. Inviting for three months up to two years is some kind of what we, what we try to do. So usually we focus on the one year, that's the standard uh, nine to 10 months, it all depends on, on, on academic years, but we, we, we consider that we should have, institutes should have a minimum size in order to have this critical mass in order to have this uh, dialogue. If you want to have a dialogue across disciplines and intellectual traditions, you need to have a critical mass of, uh, of uh, speakers and uh, interlocutors. Scientific independence, it's very important. The idea is not to have uh, you know, something that would be controlled by others, but this morning, uh, Professor Goldenberg told us how he created this institute and the type of autonomy of decision uh, for the scientific policy and the financial sustainability. That's something, it's not a program. Uh, actually, you need uh, buildings, you need buildings, uh, you need a dedicated IS site uh, for individual and collective workspaces and uh, also spaces for accommodation. So this means that if you look at this slide here, you would say, well, basically, we can do whatever we want, in a sense, to achieve these objectives. But when you look at this slide, then you figure out, well, we have some basic rules. And if you follow these rules, in a sense, you can safely, <laughs> I would say, uh, uh, consider yourself as an institute for advanced study, you'd be part of this, of this conversation. It's important because when we actually move to the networking session, or if we want to move into uh, international collaborations, it's important that we can also exchange on Di diverse but compatible uh, schemes. So this is, uh, I don't have time, but you all know that there is a strong impact on, on the fellows of the IES residencies, uh, uh, on research, on their career, and we know also that there is a strong impact for uh, communities and institutions. Uh, I don't have time now because only 17 minutes, and I know Bernd, he will uh, yell at me in a few minutes from now. Right. So uh, just one slide on this initiative you mentioned, the uh, ERIAS program uh, that was uh, developed by this uh, NETIAS uh, network. So you have some, uh, some features here. It was really interesting to give 
at some point in time a, a point of entry for this diversity. We have 19 institutes for advanced study, but we have like a, a single application form and where you could apply for three institutes uh, in, in, in Europe, you could select three out of the 19, you pr provide justifications why you would like to go to Oros, to Jerusalem and to Freiburg, and, and then there will be a, a joint selection committee with uh, peer reviewed and, uh, and, 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 and also obviously the final decision lying with the Institute of Study. So it's been a highly successful uh, project. We had like more than 1,000 applications a year, uh, and really it has been, I think, also something that has helped us uh, work together. And final slides, uh, I have more slides, but I just would like to say one word on the on the French network of Institute for Advanced Studies. Uh, the acronym would be in English NEFIAS, so you would, you would have NETIAS and NEFIAS, the network of French Institute for Advanced Study but uh, we very rarely uh, use that. So basically we have uh, successfully developed uh, four institutes for advanced study over the past 10 years, and we have a, a strong diversity within the network, which uh, replicates to some extent the diverse nature of institute for advanced study in Europe. We have two UBS, really full UBS, one in Lyon, supported by the University of Lyon, one in Marseille, supported by ex-Marseille University, we have one fully independent foundation, research foundation in Nantes, uh, following the model of uh, Vienna and, and, uh, and Berlin. And when I call this a mixed animal, uh, because no one is from Paris here, and we have a colleague from Sergi, but that's, you, you won't mind. It's a mixed animal in a sense because it, 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 it has a relationship with 12 universities and grandes écoles. Uh, so it's not belonging to one specific institute for one university, but it has uh, a, a scientific basin that is uh, uh, the Région Ile-de-France and 12 uh, institutes, uh, 12 universities and grandes écoles. It's a rather large scheme now because we invite up to 100 fellows per year. So it's, uh, it's a rather consistent uh, for 700 research a month. And if you look at the size slide that I showed you before, like the large institute for advanced study in Europe, they go up to 450 research a month, like uh, Jerusalem, like Vico, like Amsterdam. Uh, so we, together, in a sense, with the complementarity uh, between the four institutes for advanced study, we offer uh, you know, uh, a rather a large uh, fellowship scheme and incoming mobility scheme. And we have invited up to 800 fellows so far over the past uh, seven or eight years. So it's really now in full speed. And we have a strong diversity in terms of themes and organization so that if you really want to spend, you know, a year in France, uh, having a dialogue and entering a dialogue with, uh, with colleagues, uh, uh, you can look at themes, you can look at the geographical orientations. Some of them are working on the Mediterranean, some of them are working on, on Asia, the other ones are uh, on, on, on Africa and South Asia. So you have some high complementarity and, and we, we kind of uh, uh, proud that we've been able to, uh, which is uh, kind of, you know, you, when you're developing one institute, you can imagine when you're developing four institutes in a row, the, um, the magnitude of the, of the difficulties. But, We've been uh, rather successful, uh, and uh, now it's uh, in full speed, uh, and we are developing a, a lot of international collaborations, and that's really why we are um, uh, here again. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Olivier. <laughs> yeah, well, well, well done. Um, one should add, actually, that um, I mean, not, not that there are even more institutes for advanced studies in, in, in France. They are not all part of the network, right? Because I mean, our partner university in Strasbourg, for example, also has um, uh, institute for advanced studies. So there is there's, there's even more richness. And maybe just since you since you mentioned that for the Urias program, on average, we had about a thousand applicants per year. That if we just think, you know, we have 23 institutes in Netias, we have 39 in UBS. Our institutes are also partly responsible for all the problem of finding peer reviewers because, I mean, there's a certain, we all know from our funding institutions, there is an end to this. But we are actually also an, an important part of that process. Just imagine if all of us have about 200 applicants and we get try to find at least two peer reviews for at least half of them, you know, if, if half of them are e eligible. We are part of the problem in a, in a way, but I mean, the good thing about this is that many of us have, in the meantime, accumulated so many alumni and people who know our institutes that you can more or less have, you have actually a greater commitment from these people 
to our institutes than they have to the national funding organizations. That's the, that's the positive thing. And about the criteria for membership in NETIAS, maybe we will actually sort of address these things also tomorrow when we talk about membership criteria for UBS. But this is really a different set of, um, of, of institutes. Okay, so five minutes for questions. Yes. Jane Allmeyer, Trinity College, Dublin. I have two questions for you. Um, one is, how do you assess the added value that the visiting research fellows bring to the university? How do, uh, how do we measure this? How do we really look at that in terms of the impact for the host institution? The second question is about gender. I'm curious to know if any universities consciously try to ensure some sort of gender equality across their visiting uh, uh, fellowship program? If, if they don't, why not? If they do, how successful uh, have they been? Okay, two difficult questions. But the first one... I, I can I, add to the second one if you want to. If you don't know what to okay. say. No, no, I know what to say. But, you know what to say. <laughs> no, I know what to say. I, I can know. provide some elements of say. answers. Uh, I went very quickly on, on these slides because... Uh, of the time constraint and the, the top presidency. Uh, um, but the, if you look at the, uh, the second part of the slide, it's basically what we've been uh, you know, uh, witnessing and collecting evidence because as you know, as all of us know, uh, we are undergoing an evaluation like every year or every two years because it's a costly uh, initiative, it's a costly program, you're inviting people, you're offering a, a residency, you're offering a salary, you're offering scientific accompaniment. So we are evaluated like every year and every, uh, every two years, and we, uh, we have to face this question, what is the added value, especially uh, with universities, with national research centers, with national research agencies, how do you, uh, how do you fit? And they, these evaluators are not really interested in the first part of my slide. They say, okay, not the fellows benefit from that, we're quite sure about that, but should we care? And is like public money or taxpayer money, uh, uh, French taxpayer money should pay for uh, Ari to come for six months to yes. France? And yes. yeah, <laughs> we'll do, we'll do. But so we, we concentrate on the second part. Uh, and what, we, what we've seen, uh, especially in the case of UBIAS, uh, uh, because it's the link between the institute and the, uh, the home institution is kind of uh, uh, more direct in a sense. What we've seen is growing and lasting scientific collaborations. Now we have a 10-year perspective. I speak for France, but I know that's the case if Michal was to speak now or the, the colleagues in Bielefeld and so on. Those who have been in this game for quite a long time, they would... Uh, document and provide a lot of empirical evidence of lasting collaborations. People, the idea is not that you stay five months or 10 months and then bye-bye and you never see that person again. The idea is that you insert the person, he or she, in the, in, in the, in the scientific, academic, university environment and you, you try to make like this have a long-term perspective. In a sense, try to figure out with what type of colleagues he or she should, should work and try to promote. It's also related to the third point, the enhanced access to international funding. For example, we've seen in many occasions that fellows after, not maybe during the fellowship, and we've been working quite a lot on the après coup, on the after the residency period, to say, okay, why don't you come back uh, and why don't you have like, uh, uh, um, whatever, a cost program, uh, well, I would maybe too technical to European uh, centers, but those uh, from the European universities will know like uh, network funding or uh, individual funding uh, like ERC or collaborative funding under the societal challenges of Horizon 2020. We've seen that these fellows uh, that have been in, uh, who have been invited in this Institute for Advanced Studies have been really active agents of A, developing programs and projects and partnerships with local fellows and also uh, giving, uh, you know, in many occasions the possibility to, uh, to get international grants and to locate these grants not in their home institution but at the Institute for Advanced Study. So this is valued very much, for example, in, in, in Marseille, we got two ERC grants with former fellows these were the two in social sciences and humanities. These were the two first ERC grants in social sciences of the University of Marseille. So you can imagine the added value for the alma mater, for the, uh, for the university to say, well, you have attracted very interesting 
uh, international fellows, they and they it's a five year project, as you know, so and a lot of money and have been able to, you know, attract that. So I think one and three is, is really, uh, really important uh, features. And uh, the second one in the middle, when you say scientific collaboration, it's not necessarily research projects uh, on like core issues of fundamental research or applied research will also be like you know joint training programs uh, international summer schools where you try to have like mobility of phd students postdocs uh, and and try to organize an international academy for example like the possibility to develop uh, para-scientific collaborations not maybe getting into the core of the of the research per se fundamental or applied but you know gravitating around the research activities to be able to implement a set of 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 uh, initiatives and we've seen that and if we have been uh, you know the french are usually quite stingy for these type of things if we've been able to collect like 25 million euros for the institute for advanced study is be because we've been able to document and show that there was a, a, an effective added value and impact of the activity of the institute for advanced study for the second question the second question will be more, much much quicker um, the urias project for example was instrumental in bringing this kind of general perspective into the invitation policy of institute for advanced studies in europe because when you look at the also because it it kind of mimic the distribution also of like at high level if you're looking at 50s or 60s or 70s uh, you have more males than you have females in high positions uh, because it reflects what has been going wrong over the past 30 or 40 years so if you do not correct that uh, then the the distribution is like two-third one-third basically in the invitation policy in ubias in, in UBIAS, in URIAS, then acronyms uh, <laughs> become mixed and confused, but in the URIAS fellowship program, that was uh, something that we pledged. We say we need to, the target is to achieve a 50-50 uh, balance. And so it was in the criteria uh, of the experts, of the advisory board, and in the final decision that we should tend towards this objective. And then with the 300, Arias fellows we invited since 2011, we had 55-45, which is much better than 66-33. It's not we're not quite there yet, but if you introduce the kind of uh, um, the right attention to this problem, then you can really, without compromising on quality at all, but having this in mind, then you are able to uh, to improve things. Well, I'm not going to, to add to this because we are running um, over time here, but both of these questions, of course, would be central, for instance, to issues that all of us need to cope with, and that would be also interesting topics to discuss during our networking uh, sessions. Um, um, I think this is where I, where I leave it um, for the time being. I think I also stop at this point the discussion, the Q&A part for Olivier's talk, and I would just like to reassure you that I have not lost sight of the uh, movement of time, so we actually started about half an hour late, and uh, we will sort of cut a little bit into the networking session, but certainly what, we'll, what we will not cut into in, is the USP tour. So uh, so we may actually go on to about um, four o'clock um, here in the session, and then have coffee and have a shorter networking um, uh, period. Um, since I just briefly want to introduce Ari, I don't know where Ari has actually gone now that he's, it's his turn, but... Um, Anyway, so uh, I don't need to introduce him a, a great deal, but in order to say a few words uh, more about him, um, I, I would like to pick up on, on, on the uh, creation of this nice uh, expression that you mentioned, uh, Olivier, that you said it's part of the art of institutes for advanced studies to, uh, to manage serendipity, okay? Maybe in the case of Ari, I would say it's rather a kind of engineering of, of serendipity because he is uh, an engineer, he is an industrial engineer. Uh, he holds a double appointment at this university yeah. as a full professor yeah. in the business yeah. school and as yeah. an associate professor at the engineering school. He is also the research director of its Center for Technology Policy Ma and Policy and Management. Um, and he was the CEO of the Sao Paulo State Institute for Technological Research, the largest of its kind in Latin America. Many other things I could actually say. The crucial thing is that he actually was um, a deputy 
uh, he was a member of the steering uh, board or steering committee of this institute before he actually became uh, deputy director in 2016. Um, and uh, it's also in 2016 that Ari um, kindly enough volunteered to become uh, deputy coordinator of, uh, of UBS. And I can only repeat, um, it was a real pleasure to actually uh, prepare this conference together with him. Ari, you will talk about the situation in Latin and Central America, or the North America as well. I think you cover the whole North and South continent. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Bernd, for the kind introduction. I'll try to be brief and use less than a lot of time. Uh, 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 one way of uh, uh, presenting is, is uh, saying that we uh, are in this session talking about the rest of the world in terms of number of institutes because the uh, highest concentration is Europe and Asia. Uh, but the other is that we are talking about areas where UBS can expand in the future very much. And so I'm calling this uh, the triple A area. America, uh, Australia and Africa. Uh, I'll be very brief. This is a map of the network participants and you can see that we have uh, in the Americas, or America as we say, we have uh, four institutes in, uh, in North America, in the uh, English-speaking part of North America, and we have only one in the uh, Latin uh, uh, originated languages uh, here uh, in, in this part of the world, which is Sao Paulo, where you are here. Uh, we have one institute uh, in Australia and one institute in Africa. So in terms of existing institutes, we have the three, uh, as you can see. Uh, and basically, we could divide it in the northern and southern hemisphere if you want. So the north and the south. So basically, UBS for the moment is very much concentrated in the northern hemisphere of our planet. And, oh, and we are talking about... Uh, uh, basically the South. Now, uh, firstly about uh, America, uh, I won't talk about uh, the northern part of uh, this continent because uh, it's a more complicated situation uh, that we have been discussing in the coordinating group and I think it might appear tomorrow during the director's meeting because it's something that we have to decide as a group how we deal with uh, uh, the situation of these institutes, which are part, which but really have not been present and uh, and have their own uh, life, and uh, not talking about uh, the barriers that uh, a certain president is trying to build between uh, 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 near the Rio Grande uh, with the northern part of the continent and the central and southern part. But anyhow, but I think uh, the northern part of this continent is out of this presentation. So I'm talking about what in the national, international associations, organizations like uh, United Nations, etc. it's called uh, Latin America and the Caribbean. And again, uh, uh, UBS in the new world, and we also hope this is a new UBS world. It means it's an area of expansion, I'll try to show you. In Brazil, uh, the Institute of Advanced Studies are uh, uh, in a process that I can call uh, in one uh, word, uh, strengthening. So we have, and we are extremely happy uh, tomorrow that we'll have one institute applying for UBS membership, the Institute for, of Transdisciplinary Advanced Studies. I'm putting the name in English. In Portuguese, the acronym is e -E -E IEAT from the Federal University of Minas Gerais, a very prestigious federal university in Belo Horizonte. The institute was created uh, uh, really in 1999 as part of, uh, let's say, uh, of the rector's office, but really became uh, independent, autonomous at least, uh, better than independent in 2005. And Professor Esteban de la Casa, who is, where is he sitting? Yeah, it's there. Thank you. Uh, please raise a hand again so you know Professor Esteban. And because I won't get into the details of every institute, and in this particular case, you'll hear him uh, tomorrow because he's going to present. But I'm uh, asking every member who is present here from this institute to raise a hand. So uh, all institutes, by the way, are uh, in principle uh, open to any area of knowledge. To go back to the way Professor Miyajima uh, described the institutes in, in, 
in, in Eastern Asia. So uh, we have one institute uh, concretely uh, already applying. We have three institutes which I are present here, uh, which I say are ramping up. One is the Latin America Institute of Advanced Studies, uh, AILIA, Professor José Vicente well, oh, is there. Professor José Vicente was also present in Birmingham, is, a, a, f I would say, a frequent uh, a participant in UBS. It's uh, extremely nice. And uh, uh, both uh, this institute uh, and the next one that I'll uh, call in a second in uh, Fortaleza have the interesting uh, situation uh, that both are led by people uh, focused not only on social sciences, but focused on a specific issue, which is uh, the issue of violence, which, as you heard this morning, uh, is a problem in the region, in Brazil in particular. And so, and they work together also, also with a group at our university of Professor Sergio Adorno, who is on, on our board. So we have uh, another institute which uh, uh, was really uh, kind of approved as uh, a statute very recently in 2016 uh, as a College of Advanced Studies in Fortaleza. Fortaleza. Rio Grande do Sul, by the way, I forgot to tell you, is the most southern state of Brazil, almost at, uh, near Uruguay. Uh, if you go a, a bit more uh, to the south, you'll be already in Uruguay. And uh, the College of Advanced Studies is, if you go a bit up, you are in the Atlantic uh, it is in the northeast of Brazil. And we have uh, a very recent institute that is really, uh, uh, sorry, a, professor, a college of Vietnam studies, uh, a professor says, oh, is there sitting? Yeah, where? Oh, okay, he's here. So his coat is here and he'll be back. <laughs> to prove that he was around, he left his coat here. Okay, uh, he'll be around. And Professor Sergio Barreira, so he is coming back, and he'll be obviously glad to to talk uh, about this institute uh, to whoever is interested. And uh, we have a situation uh, of uh, the University of Campinas. The University of Campinas is a, a state university. It's the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul and the Federal University of Ceará is the same as Federal University of Minas Gerais. Are all uh, federal belonging or connected to the Ministry of Education. Uh, Unicampi is a university which is a sister, a younger sister of USP. So what you heard about uh, the issues, the general issues of the state universities from Professor Goldenberg this morning also applies to University of Campinas. And University of Campinas had uh, for some time uh, an institute or uh, an area that was uh, uh, operating as an institute of advanced studies for some reason it uh, at some point uh, ceased to be and uh, very recently december 2017 uh, it began uh, or began again uh, with the interesting name of idea and we'll have in the five minutes presentation later professor carlos vogti is a former rector of the university a very active person in the uh, higher education system was also the secretary of higher education of the state of sao paulo and he is uh, pushing it and it's very interesting to know that in the board or the scientific uh, committee of this institute we have three members of our institute that uh, uh, so this brings a connection professor martin grossman uh, professor uh, eugenio bucci and uh, with the third one? Just forgot. Uh, I'll remember it in a second. Celso Laffer, thank you. Celso Laffer. Uh, yes, so we have, uh, so uh, as this is also uh, from my point and using what Olivier, what you mentioned, this is a point that uh, maybe also Campinas and Sao Paulo, we are one hour of uh, uh, by car. Maybe we can also think about having joint uh, calls, uh, doing something together, not only exchanging among ourselves, but uh, joining the forces and uh, offering okay so it's a joint call and some will go to campinas some will come to sao paulo and uh, whatever and uh, they live in junjiai who's in the middle of the on, on the road correct so they can come one day here and one day there if they want uh we have a, a what's called the brazilian forum of institute of advanced studies the last meeting was hosted in belo horizonte by professor Estevan de la casa uh, in 2015 with nine institutes in different situations. So uh, four of them are here that you'll see. The fifth 
uh, is our institute five. So there are other four uh, institutes, University of Brasilia, Rio de Janeiro, etc. But uh, I think uh, 2018 is a good year to uh, bring the forum again and see uh, how we are doing, what we are doing, and the fact that uh, more people are in this network or interested uh, in this network will, I think, uh, give a good uh, push to this movement. So this is about Brazil. Uh, I believe I could make the point that, in general, as a movement, uh, it is uh, strengthening. Uh, other Latin American countries, if I have to, to use one word, I would call it emerging. So we have in University of Costa Rica, very beautiful university in Central America, in San Jose, uh, the creation of the university space of advanced studies, UCREA is the acronym, and Professor Javier Trejos, who is sitting uh, there, please raise your hand, is uh, the leader of this effort, uh, which is to begin in, in, in space, and uh, it's also particularly touching that he was so kind to invite us to be part of the, of the board. And uh, uh, so this also brings uh, a connection among, uh, among us. Uh, it was, this, this connection was established uh, very curiously. Uh, the shortest point between San Jose and Sao Paulo is Bielefeld, because all began in, in Bielefeld uh, with a Spanish guy who is part of his time in Costa Rica. So you see that this is a very international community. A Spanish guy in Bielefeld and a Brazilian who was in Bielefeld at that time. Uh, anyhow, so ended up uh, working together in Costa Rica. A also December 2017 or, or so, a very recent decision of university, National University of Litoral in Santa Fe, where oh, Gonzalo Soso is there. Uh, to establish an institute of, of advanced studies. Uh, for other reasons, I know this university. It's a, it's a very nice, uh, very advanced university. The National Universities of Argentina are usually uh, conservative. And this university, of Lit the National University of Litoral, has always been a university trying to be advanced as a university as a whole. So it's uh, very welcome to, to the team. Uh, also in... Uh, uh, in not really in yeah in Latin America I'm sorry in, in Lac countries we have a, a new center in Guadalajara Mexico but because it is an MSM uh, Maria Sibyl Miriam Center we'll have a session tomorrow that also uh, dear Bernd will uh, um, uh, moderate so I'm not talking anything about that just mentioning and this will be dealt tomorrow so not to to use the time. So this is uh, basically what concludes uh, this part of uh, uh, America, which is Latin America and the Caribbean. We really have nothing in the Caribbean, but just the acronym is, is standard. And Australia and Africa, uh, I really uh, know very little about. I know more this region. Uh, in the case of Australia, we have Clarissa Ball, which is sitting, uh, Clarissa? Oh, Clarissa there. So uh, maybe if uh, there is, uh, and, and Clarissa is a long-standing member of the network, so probably you heard in several places a uh, uh, description of, of, of the institute. And uh, I tried to do something which um, is what Paulo Saldiva mentioned this morning. If somebody is sick, the first thing he does or she does is to talk to uh, Dr. Google. So I also this morning, uh, try just to be sure to Google Institute of Advanced Studies in Australia. Just put this general expression, uh, ask Dr. Google. And Dr. Google brought some, uh, immediately, some Institute of Advanced Studies in Australia, but it's something totally different, something crazy, offering courses, sending people abroad. It's nothing to do. So I decided not to get myself uh, in a mess here. Uh, and entering and saying things that I don't have any, any, uh, let's say, personal or or more evidence-based uh, 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 elements to 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 tell you and say that for the moment we have in Australia only one uh, member that is Institute of Advanced Studies in in Perth, very active member by the way in Africa to. Uh, as a counterpoint, we have the Stellenbosch Institute 
of uh, connected to Stellenbosch University in the city called Stellenbosch, which uh, seems to be one of what is called internally dormant institutes. And again, uh, it's an issue that will be dealt tomorrow. And we have also a Maria Sibyl Mariam Center in Akaragana that also will be dealt tomorrow. So this uh, 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 Professor Ortman is kind of a general picture of what is happening, just to give you uh, an overview, a helicopter overview. In the uh, uh, end of this uh, session, uh, uh, as an idea, I think, of uh, Morton or Bernd, I don't remember, there will be five minutes for some institutions, uh, institutes to present themselves, the ones who are not really uh, asking to be members of UBIAS, and uh, the institute in Unicampi by, it will be uh, in a few minutes be presented in more detail by uh, Professor Carlos Vokci. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was uh, a true helicopter overview, but very well done. Um, questions to Ari. Um, yes, Peter Weyer. Uh, my name is Peter Vale. I'm the director of the Johannesburg Institute for oh, Advanced forgot, Study. I forgot about you. Apparently, uh, there forgot. is no institute there. I mean, I'm not there, but I, the institute is there. I am here. Uh, this has been quite a depressing uh, presentation. Not only this one, but the one before by Olivia. Because I don't think that I've ever heard a really good idea so substantially destroyed by forms of organization and accounting. It seems to me that the only real good idea about institutes for advanced study is that they afford what is the great luxury that we can all appreciate, slow scholarship that scholarship should not only be measured in terms of output, but scholarship should be measured in terms of conversations, seminars, deep reading, and deep thinking. And I'm afraid I haven't heard any of that here so far today. I mean, I'm reminded of the Montevideo Convention of the 1930s, which decided on what states were and what I've heard from this lecture now is some things are states and some things are not states. This is a Cartesian project that's going on here. Either you accept that people who want to develop and think deeply about scholarship, about the real purpose of scholarship, interdisciplinary, pushing boundaries, trying to create human understanding, that these alone should be enough in this process. But what I've heard here is that organization, money, outcomes are the only things that matter. So I'm a little disappointed, I must be honest. I'm sorry to say this because I'm only a visitor here to this uh, home. And I hope you'll invite me back. But I hope you'll listen a little bit to what the purpose of this whole project is. We can all agree that the real purpose of this is slow scholarship. And we need to talk more about that instead of trying to organize uh, in, a, in a Cartesian way the nature of, high, uh, of, high, uh, of advanced scholarship. Well, thank you, Peter. Uh, is that a spontaneous reaction? So first of all, some clapping hands, I think, because um, I think there is a feeling uh, that, that these kinds of aspects may come to short in presentations of this sort, but the focus here was more on the institutional side of things, I think on the, just showing what kinds of institutions are around in different parts of the world and to what extent there is some dynamics here. I mean, once we started talking about what's actually happening within these institutes, we would be very close to what you were just suggesting, uh, and just missing also in, this dis in, this, in these discussions, but I think this, this will be a different, completely different purpose, uh, actually. So it, it would be a mis misreading what we wanted to do in this, in this session.
we were talking about the European network, so that, that, that's, that, that, was the, that was the point there. So, yeah? No, I, maybe I was not clear, or uh, maybe I'm not uh, expressing myself that clearly in English, but I was not like giving any kind of recipe, or I said there was no one size fits all. We just say like the list of the common features have nothing to do and they're not intruding at all in terms of what you say about slow scholarship. And I have, you have no idea what we're doing in the French Institute for Advanced Study. It was no Cartesian presentation. In, in what I've said, I just basically laid down the diversity of the institutes trying to target one thing, fostering new thinking. If you come to Nantes, and we have a fellow here, a former fellow of the Institute for Advanced Study in Nantes, what they do is basically concentrate on research and dialogue. And that's it. But at some point, if you want to get funding for these type of things, maybe in Joburg it's different. You clap, you do this, and you have like 10 million euros. In Europe, it's not like this. At some point in time, these are expensive uh, initiatives, expensive uh, programs to some extent, and you need to showcase some kind of positive impact beyond, and I went very quickly, I said there are very positive outcomes for fellows. And I said, um, the, the question was uh, uh, by Trinity College on what is the impact and the feedback for institutions. So I concentrate on that. I could have spent more time on the upper part of my slide saying, well, you have a lot of positive impact for fellows because basically what we do is we concentrate, we give free time for research, we give, we give an exclusive focus on interactions between fellows, and, and we rely mostly on these formal and informal exchanges, so there was no rationalizing of what an institute should do or how it should function. The idea was to just lay down some basic features of what an institute for advanced study is. And if you come to Paris next time, or if you come to Nantes, Lyon and Marseille, and other institutes in the network, you will see that we are not just like uh, doing some kind of stupid uh, organizational work in order to fit with the funding requirements of our sponsors. We're just trying to do something. Talk to Michal. What is she doing? She has to, at some point, talk back to the sponsors. But what they do at the Institute is to foster new thinking by giving free space and time for researchers to discuss together. Go to Aarhus. So I don't know what you're talking about. So I'm sorry about that. I don't know what you're talking about. we just concentrating on, and the, the exercise went in 20 minutes to show the diversity of this Institute for and Study. So we were asked to look at these aspects. I could have talked 20 minutes about the, the added value of slow scholarship and the way we developed that in the four institutes in France. There was not a request. So uh, I'm sorry there was a misunderstanding in the, in the session and you were disappointed by the, by, by the contents of my talk. But uh, it has nothing to do with the, uh, with the way we function and the, the, that we would project a kind of a rationalizing, organizing uh, type of institute for advanced studies. No? This will be the perfect moment to move on into the coffee break in order to actually sort of continue this kind of uh, discussion, but we'll keep it at the backs of our minds, maybe even further to the front. Um, and, uh, but we should actually conclude this session by giving the three institutions the possibility to briefly present themselves uh, to us, um, uh, as just mentioned by, by Ari. So if you just look at the program, uh, we have um, Lincoln, uh, the IAS, um, from England, uh, presented by Stuart Humphreys. We have from Turku, Martin Klunen, and we have Carlos Vogt uh, from the uh, um, Unicamp IAS. Um, I would just ask perhaps to start in that order, so it would be, um, would be actually Stuart to, to actually start, and if you give us sort of five minutes uh, introductions to your, to your institutions, because these are the ones that we don't know at all yet, or you're currently, some of them are actually very new, um, one of them is more established. Thank you. So yes, uh, the, the, the slight question from just now is where is Lincoln? Um, so I'll answer that in a second. Uh, I'm here because um, we're trying to set up a new institute and we're a very new university. So I'm going to tell you probably more about the, the university than, than the institution. Uh, and one of the questions I'm interested in knowing is whether our model will fit into what we see as a general institute for advanced studies. Better, sorry. Um, and also, uh, we seem to have a number of unique problems 
which probably you each have one of these unique problems, but my, my feeling is that Lincoln has all of them at once. So we'll probably uh, discuss that in a second. So Lincoln, uh, yes, exactly. Uh, if, you, if you think of the UK and you go up about 200 miles from London, we're there. It's the middle of agricultural country. Um, it's an ancient seat of learning, but it's a very new university. So um, we were founded in 1996, so the whole university didn't exist before this point. In fact, my, my office sits in one of these siding buildings, so we've had to strip down the, uh, the, the railway sidings and rebuild the university campus on this site. Um, the history of Lincoln itself uh, goes a long way back, so we have one of the only four original copies of the Magna Carta, which started off uh, uh, reigning in kings across the world. Um, I'm not sure how, how good it's going with the American Constitution at the moment, but we'll put that to one side. Um, Lincoln itself is beautiful. It, uh, it, it was important through from the Iron Age, Romans and Vikings. Uh, we're able to use this amazing cathedral for our, our graduation ceremonies. So although we have a small university, we can offer our students for an individual uh, perspective on their education. Uh, we started with 2,000 students, more or less. We're up to around 16,000 now, so we're really small, certainly in, in UK terms. Um, we're developing a, a, an international reputation for the way we work with students and employers, and um, we're trying to, to bring through the, the city itself and, and, and draw investment into it. So, um, on top of that, uh, we, we founded our institute two weeks ago. Um, so the, the launch event happened two weeks ago. I took, took up my role as director in July, August last year. So I've been frantically trying to put things together since then. Um, one of the key things for us is that being a, a new university with a very big focus on teaching, what we need to do is increase our staff's engagement with research and to boost our research culture. Um, we also need, as you know, to let people know where Lincoln is and what we do. So, so one of the, the other tasks that we have is, is, is more showcasing what we can offer. So, so in that respect, I, I suspect we're similar in, in a few aspects to a number of you in terms of institutions, but, but we probably have a bigger emphasis on, on building up our internal research culture than that is perhaps you all. Um, I feel very strongly that, that our Institute for Advanced Study should be I hope that's not an omen, um, should represent individuals and schools within the university. So we're very much building up from the bottom to, to enable our researchers to engage with excellent, distinguished researchers from around the world and show them what they could be doing rather than dictating down from our management about the direction our research should go. So I think most of those things chime with what I've heard and talked to people already. So we want to become a focal point for research in our university. Uh, we need to lead on developing and showcasing interdisciplinarity, and we want to form a hub for our professoriate. So at the moment, we have professors who uh, are scattered across the university without any real voice. Uh, so I guess the, the, the meat of it is that we have currently have five areas of activity. We have visiting international home fellowship schemes, but these, I suspect, are shorter than the residences that uh, we've been talking about earlier. Um, we're bringing in inaugural professorial lectures because as a university, we're, we just haven't got around to that yet. So we're bringing in these lectures to show people what our research is about. Um, we're helping to implement development activities in terms of research culture. We'll be uh, hosting our Santander Mobility Awards and, and hopefully running some vacation schools in the future. So it's a very flexible and um, rough plan at the moment, uh, but that's, I think, about all I want to say. All right. Thanks, Thank th thanks a lot for this brief uh, presentation. Um, so, free time for that. Martin, um, so this is uh, the Toku Institute for Advanced Studies that's, uh, that has been around for, uh, for uh, considerably longer than 2018. Um, and Martin will tell us more about this, but um, he has taken on this position only fairly recently. Um, so it's less the institute than the director that is, uh, that is new.
Hello. Uh, yep, I'm uh, Martin Clunan, director of the Torku Institute for Advanced Studies. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for allowing me to speak today. It's a pleasure to be here and to meet the UBIAS community. And it's also nice to see some debate within the UBIAS community, because I think that's what higher education should be about. Um, so I'm this Anglo-Irish guy who lived in Scotland for the last 20 years and now finds himself in Finland, which I'm also told is the happiest country in the world. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how many of those people saw that uh, recent uh, research that said Finland was the happiest country in the world. But it's also probably the, the most understated country in the world, I think, from my experience. So I'm a bit more flamboyant, I think, than the average Finn, if such a thing exists. Anyway, enough of me and on to Tias. Um, so the Torku Institute so I just wanted to, to flag up one thing before I go to my next slide, which is to ask you to have a quick look at the website, which tells you much more about the, uh, the activities of TS. And I've put a, a bit of resources into the, into the website, into, and you can see some, um, some talk from our researchers there about their lives in TS. So TS is the Torku Institute for Advanced Studies. Uh, Torku is in the southwest of Finland, um, about two hours on the train from Helsinki. Um, TS was established in 2008 to promote high quality interdisciplinary research and to enhance the University of Torku's research reputation. Um, it is funded, uh, Torku, in Torku there are two collegium. There is one, the Torku Collegium for Science and Medicine, and we're the, we're the one for the humanities and the social sciences, really. We're funded um, by top slicing of, the, uh, of um, the faculty grants from Education, Humanities, Law, Social Science, and the Torku School of Economics, and, uh, and some also some direct uh, university funding. So about two thirds from the faculties and a third from the, uh, from the university itself. We have a mixture of uh, postdoctoral and collegium researchers. All of our researchers are funded for three years with their salary and research expenses of 3,000 euros a year. Uh, they have to concentrate on one research project during their time with us, so hopefully some, some space for some, uh, some kind of out there thinking and they're only allowed to do a maximum of 5% teaching during their time with us. Um, in 2018, we have uh, 27 researchers overall, um, of which 17 are women and 10 are men. So our gender balance is pretty good, I think. Um, so we have 10, sorry, we have a mixture of, of, of collegium researchers, which are kind of mid and, uh, and uh, early career researchers, and 17 postdoctoral researchers. We hold regular meetings for our researchers where they meet one another, discuss their projects. We hold various symposium of an interdisciplinary nature, seminars and workshops for the wider community uh, with an emphasis, as you may uh, not be surprised, on inter- and cross-discipline research. We also have, we will have a, a, a 10th anniversary lecture um, on, uh, on the 8th of June where we will celebrate our 10 years and we will spend the day discussing the nature of interdisciplinary work. Um, we currently have a call for, for new people to join us. We have a turnover of about 10 researchers each year. Uh, we currently have this call for new positions, which was advertised in February and closes on the 13th of April. We are advertising five postdoctoral and six collegium positions for each of the years 2019, 2020. And I just spoke to my coordinator today and we've had over 100 applications already. We expect in the region of four to 500 uh, applications for that call. The way that we review things is uh, we set up cross faculty internal review processes first and then we send probably about 50 or 60 out for external review by two reviewers and we will make appointments in September. Oh yeah um, one of the things that uh, we, we do is to hold these uh, regular interdisciplinary events where we look at various aspects which are in common with all our researchers one of the things I did when, when, I, when I first arrived, and that was in September, was to talk to my researchers about their careers. And it was obvious that all of them were really scared of failing, but when you talk to them, they all say, no, everything is fine, thank you for asking. So I said, let's, let's discuss notions of failure. So we're having an event where we'll have three keynote speakers across the discipline event on the 13th of April, Friday the 13th of April, to discuss failure. And that's just an example of some of the cross-disciplinary work that we do holding regular symposium. Um, we are applying for U UBS membership. I hope to become a more active and uh, part of the community in future years. But for now, thanks for listening and ask me any questions uh, afterwards. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Martin.
And as our last presentation, then before the um, before the coffee break, I would like to ask our colleague uh, from Unicamp. Before you're getting entirely um, restless or so, so um, we actually sort of are in the process of slightly reorganizing uh, the program of the of the afternoon. So we suggest that we have this talk, and then there is one more spontaneous talk that will follow this also from a new institution uh, here. But we will stop at four o'clock sharp. Then we'll have our coffee break, slightly prolonged. We skip the networking session because it would be too short anyway. And Ari is just trying to find out whether either we have the USP tour at quarter to five, as announced, or maybe even a little earlier. So, so nothing to worry about. So plenty of time and also to continue our discussions over coffee break and in the bus, of course, while we're having the tour. Okay, so and now it's the floor uh, Thank you. for our next speaker. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, as um, Ari mentioned, we are a very, very recent uh, institute for advanced studies in the University of uh, uh, Campinas, uh, Unica. Uh, It was uh, it was uh, created uh, in 2017 by our uh, director Marcelo Nobre, and uh, uh, the institute the institute aims to promote collaborative reflection focused on the creation of advanced knowledge, considering the development of uh, uh, different fields of research. Idea, idea does not provide uh, uh, teaching in terms of regular courses, uh, such as uh, undergraduate, graduated extension, sequential or specialization, uh, and uh, uh, its purposes uh, in general are uh, to host the study of fundamental and innovative themes, fostering the interdisciplinary discussion of science and culture through uh, its researchers and artists, residents or guests in the thematic groups. To support excellence in research at UNICAMP, needed to achieve a leading position in the national and international academic research leadership groups. To increase the acti attractiveness of UNICAMP as a work uh, environment, conducive to national and international research uh, to stimulate the insertion of the university national and international discussions to identify new fields of expertise uh, research. This is the team. Uh, this is the Scientific and Cultural Council. Uh, I'm the the president of this uh, council. Uh, the idea should provide an uh, environment of study, research in scientific cultural exchanges of a fundamentally multidisciplinary and international bias, open to a wide range of subjects, especially those that touch the boundaries of known paradigms a space of free scientific and cultural creation aimed at leading edge reflections in the different areas of scientific knowledge, culture, and arts from Brazil and abroad. Researcher and artist, the means of accomplishing the objectives of the idea is to welcome researchers and artists from Brazil and abroad to interact at a high level from qualified projects with the academic community of UNICAMP. We have uh, uh, some uh, different modalities 
One is the resident research uh, for six months. The resident artists, uh, we called it Eudaiust. Uh, it is uh, a novelist, a Brazilian uh, writer. Uh, program, six months too. Thematic study groups, two years. He guests for individual conferences or seminars. Uh, as we are uh, very recent, we uh, participate in the organization of the first International Congress, Fausto Castillo, which was a professor in, at the Unicamp uh, of philosophy the last years, uh, and uh, we are a lot of uh, planned uh, initiatives among, uh, among them, a seminar on post-truths carried, carried out in partnership with the newspaper Folha de São Paulo, organization and development of the group of studies on education with Professor Angelo Portelazzo uh, as coordinator, and Maria Alice Setubo of the Scientific and Cultural Council of IDEA. One project of Four Nation, a joint initiative between the Institutes of Advanced Studies of the three state universities of Sao Paulo, under the coordination of Augusto Rodrigues, member of the Scientific and Cultural Council of IDEA. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think while the last presentation is sort of built uh, up, I, maybe uh, one of the discussions that you uh, could also have with some of us here is um, on which institutes actually um, have successfully established to have artists in residence, for example. So there are several here in the room that I know actually also do this. So could maybe we have a brief indication who, who does have artists in residence. So in Johannesburg, in Bielefeld, um, Constance, uh, we have, so I mean, Marseille, so, yeah, Carlos, so if you, if you okay. want to talk to, to people who also have artists in residence, for example, there are also institutes who have experiences, so yeah. that would be a good group to discuss uh, okay. later on, Thank you. okay, Thank you. and as a last presentation then before the coffee break, we have Luis uh, Barros, um, who is actually presenting the College of Advanced Studies of the Federal Thank University you. of Ceará, Brazil, um, it's your turn, right? Okay. Uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm here to present the uh, School of Advanced Studies for Fortaleza. I won't have much time to talk about the university or um, the, the region, so I'll just get into the, uh, the actual uh, school. Um, the, in terms of timeline, we're also very recent. We began in 2016, and our activities have actually begun. Uh, the, the activities that we do in 2017. So our mission statement is to foster uh, interdisciplinary environment and public discussions um, with cutting edge teams that are uh, interdisciplinary in nature. Um, the director is Cesar Barreira, he's here, and uh, I came in the place of the vice director. I'm a collaborator at the school, um, Alvaro Madeiro. We have a board of directors, um, which are people from the university and an advisory board which uh, are, are collaborators from other institutions in, in public sphere. Uh, clearly, the gender bi bias thing is not very good, but we'll work on that for the, the next years. Um, our broad objectives, uh, the, the primary one is to promote uh, interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary dialogue. So um, we try to articulate uh, different spheres of knowledge within our academia and with uh, civil society in general. And then um, as a, a more long-term goal uh, in terms of broad objectives, we're trying to uh, uh, build dialogue with other institutions that are similar of advanced studies in the nation and integrated to international institutions. And so in that sense, I think we come to the right place. Uh, we want to create an effective environment for projects at the regional, national, international level and support cutting edge uh, teaching, research and extension programs and also promote exchange. Uh, the other um, specific objective is to uh, create a network 
first of all, uh, internal network, and then strengthen uh, uh, exchanges between professors and researchers and, and technicians also within the academia, and then extend that into a broader network um, via Rubias and other, other possible networks that exist in Brazil. Uh, and so one of the, the, the projects that we've been engaged in in 2017 is to rethink problems of the 21st century by uh, fostering uh, public interest and bring together and bring them together in interdisciplinary panels. So our first panel, Beyond Borders, um, it, the, the idea is that the panel works, we invite someone from the natural sciences and then we invite someone from the social sciences and the humanities and we create a dialogue to a common theme and these panels were monthly. So the first one was um, on Beyond uh, Borders, uh, and it, w it was two speakers. They're, they're all, they're all two, uh, two speakers. And uh, the second one was in water security. So these are themes that would appeal to both uh, social sciences and humanities audience and uh, natural sciences audience. And they're all conducted in the, uh, the conference room of the rector. Uh, so this was uh, the one on water. We had a third panel on science and philosophy, and they all have the same structure. Uh, life extremes, childhood and late adulthood. In this case, for example, it was a doctor, a medical doctor and a sociologist. Uh, again, a medical doctor and a sociologist talking about integrative uh, in medicines, the frontier of medicines and, and how it would work. And um, finally, we talked about collective spaces. So the city, this was also mentioned here. The, during the initial, the inaugural speech, and it was mentioned in terms of the challenges that we face in Latin America in terms of urbanization. And finally, we discussed the university as a project and the challenges for 21st century knowledge. Um, for the 20, uh, for next year, uh, our challenges are solidifying SEA as a central hub where interdisciplinary networks within the university can meet and come together to uh, promote uh, other initiatives that could propel us into a more international audience and, um, you know, hopefully expand that to the northeast of Brazil because already here in Sao Paulo you have a, a very strong network and so the idea would be to extend that. Um, you may find us at the website and we thank you very much. Well, thank you very much again. I think it's really important when we actually go to um, change continents actually to see what the landscape uh, and the research scape of institutes for advanced studies is to also see not only what is there in terms of established institutes but what is actually also there in terms of dynamics what are sort of new things coming up um, and I think this is why it's really great to have all of you here and we are lo really looking forward to to discussing things with you and you with us and uh, you may get some ideas from these more established institutes, but I'm sure we may also get more than one idea from actually you, uh, and we may remember also certain things that we want to implement in our more established institutions. So let's have our coffee break now, promised uh, about 16 times, uh, but now we will have it. And then from half past onwards, roughly, we will be walking to the bus. Yes. All right. Okay. So thank you very much for this first session. We will continue then tomorrow.